All right. Hello, everybody who will be watching this webinar. If we haven't met, my name is Noelle Ford, and I'm the CEO for the company behind Versus called NeuroManagement. I am really excited about today's webinar. Um, we have Ted Johnson with us today for our professional perspective series. And I want to give you a little bit of a, a context for why we're putting together these webinars. If you have been following along, we have done a webinar with a psychologist, with a chiropractor. Um, and now today I'm really excited because Ted has, he's a performance coach and he has been integrating verses into his gym. And that probably doesn't do justice. He's going to give us the context for everything that he's doing, but um, really integrating it into a full spectrum physical health program. And I'm really excited to talk with him today. So without further ado, I want to introduce Ted Johnson. He's the founder and director of sports science at Performance Athletics. And he is a NASM certified performance enhancement specialist with 20 plus years of experience in the industry. Clients include athletes at the high school level, collegiate and pro levels including six Super Bowl winners. I am super excited to talk to you today, Ted. We, uh, we have been in communication for a long time now. You've been a Versus Partner since 2017. So let's start with uh, just an overview of what you do. Really, long story short is, uh, you know, that we coach, train, and we, we develop athletes. Kind of our, our business model, uh, and, and I, I said business on purpose is, and, and I hope we, we get a chance to get into this um, in, our, in our interaction, um, but I wanted to build, so just a little background, you know, I, I played professional football for five years. Um, I thought I was going to be the next Adrian Peterson, didn't work out that way. And the challenge was uh, that process of getting to that level, I had no idea what that took. And so my failures, I, I tried to turn my failures into what is now performance athletics. And I wanted to build a model to take a kid from 10 years old to being a professional. So you, you might remember when uh, Malcolm Gladwell uh, wrote the best-selling book um, and he talked about having the, the outliers and there's 10,000 hours and all of this and that. So I kind of reverse engineered what this process looked like. Uh, from around nine to 10 years old, all the way through high school and college. And so ultimately the professional level, what that took. So the athletes that we're fortunate enough to work with, um, it, you know, and I know I had sent you like a really long you know, bio. Uh, uh, and and I, I just bookmark, bookmarked a few athletes that have been in our program a minimum of 10 years. But, um, you know, I've, I've been able to prove over the last two decades that, that our process works and it works at a really, really high level. So, um, you know, that, that's a, just a little bit of a brief synopsis of like what we do. But, um, you know, and again, I'm not the only one. I, I work with some amazing people. Uh, and, and so I would say I'm, I'm pretty fortunate uh, from that perspective to, to work with people that are as um, inspired and as motivated as I am to help to help others. I love that. Ted, for those people, obviously we couldn't fit all of your bio uh, into a slide. So why don't you give us an overview of that email that you sent me with that long bio? Because it is really important for people to understand the context. Um, yes. And this is a moment. We, we want the people who are watching this webinar to walk away understanding that you are top of the line. This isn't, this isn't just some you know, novel, one-off experience. You are doing big things, and I want people to know about how you are doing that. So give us a little bit more context um, that was yeah. from your bio. So, um, so one, one of the things that, you know, and, and you had just shared, and so for people in the audience, you know, I didn't list, you know, my education, and I didn't list all the certifications. You might say, well, why didn't you do that? So, you know, you heard me earlier, I mentioned business. One of the things, I have a book coming out. Uh, it's called the Elite Player Pathway Project, uh, EP3. Uh, I'm super, super excited about it. I could share the notes with you later, and, and you could have people look at the, the table of contents, the preface, and everything's actually almost done. I'm just going through um, all of the, the photo credits professionally so I don't get, you know, sued later on for using a, a certain action shot, you know, in any one of the case studies. But none of these certifying bodies um, – 
that we all pay all this exorbitant sums of money to do anything on the professional side to, to help us with our stabilizing our earnings, developing a business model. You know, they just they they just spew, I call spew this this education, and then we're supposed to take that and somehow some way figure out how to be professional and make it work, you know? And unfortunately I say that because um, and as I get into the versus technology later on, but there's a lot of immensely talented people that love working with athletes and want to help people. But if they can't succeed on the business side, then it all falls apart. Uh, so that was the first thing that I wanted to say. The second thing, if we just want to look at, so if you, you know, he's retired now, but Matt Burke is one of the, the biggest, one of my first big time success stories. Uh, you know, he played, 13 odd seasons in the NFL. He's got maybe 60 million in career earnings. And, you know, he was a seventh round draft pick, you know, when he started working with me. Um, and so much of what has happened in my professional career, you know, 10, 15 years ago and currently now, it's really organic. You know, I'd love to say, wow, we've got this really cool marketing plan. Yeah, right. That's not how it really works. You know, Ryan Harris, whom has retired, you know, he is also a Super Bowl winner. 30 some odd million in career earnings. He was training in our facility. He started as a 14 year old kid, you know, so he saw me training Matt Burke and, you know, that, that led to us being able to, to get an opportunity to work with him. And, um, you know, th that's just yet another example of a guy. He's, he's been in our program 17 years. I mean, he's, he's never not been in our program. So we were fortunate. I don't say luck, but, we were fortunate to have those opportunities and maximize those opportunities, you know? And so um, I've had four of the Super Bowl winners have been in our program since they were high school kids, you know? And, and so I, I tell people, um, you know, I don't know anybody else that can say that, you know, maybe there is somewhere, but, you know, as, as many times as I've been to different events and, you know, I, I've just, I've just never met those guys, you know, um, so, so I say that to say, you know, we're, we're pretty fortunate from that perspective. Um, and those are just a couple of guys. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, Catherine Johnson, KJ, who the captain of the U.S. women's uh, Olympic rugby team. So if, if they're not familiar with rugby, you have 15s and then you have sevens. Um, and so she captained the Eagles, which is 15s. She can also play sevens. She's actually at the National Training Center currently. Um, you know, training for uh, Tokyo and uh, the World Cup, which is going to be in New Zealand in September. And so she's been in our program. She's on the cover of our website. Uh, she's been in our program for 11 years, you know, nice. going all the way back to high school. Um, you know, another female, you know, Danny Cameronisi, um, they just announced, the USA Hockey just announced, um, you know, their women's, uh, the next women's Olympic team. Uh, you know, she's a captain and she's a first line right winger. Uh, but Danny, Danny's been in our program for three years. And you know, so we've been we've been fortunate enough to have, like I said, Olympians, I mean, multiple Olympians, wrestlers, hockey players, you know, um, first round picks. And again, a lot of the kids have been through our what, what our process is. You know, and again, we like to the hallmark and what we like to hang our hat on is development, you know, and, and what's something that we call uh what they call medicine, but they call continuity of care. And so you might ask, well, you know, why, you know, what's the whole purpose of having people, you know, be in your program or wanting to develop them? Well, what I've learned experientially just as a professional athlete. Um, and so, and I, and I had put in the little bio that I shared with you. So uh, Matt Burke and, and Ryan Harris, neither one of those guys played their entire career with the team that they were drafted by, you know, the statistics show the longer you play the game at the highest level, um, the likelihood of you playing for a different team increases tenfold after your fifth or sixth year. And so we're talking about guys that played 12, 13 years, you know, 10, 11 years. You know, Ryan Harris has, has you know, one of the unique accomplishments of starting 16 games, you know, for four different teams. You know, there, there's not a lot of pros at the offensive line position that can say that. You know, so um, for him to be able to go back, you know, and win a Super Bowl with the team that drafted him is just one of the greatest accomplishments ever. 
But I say that to say we're talking about a guy that's had three back surgeries, Yao Ming toe surgery. He's had knee surgery, um, you know, and so that's why I talk about continuity of care. You know, as you and what we preach, teach, and coach, as you as an athlete, you know, what are the things that you can control? You can control your training program, you know, and so we wanted to be so good at what we did that no matter who you played for, where you live, you know, that we can always help, you know, help you advance, um, you know, or, or, or not regress as much as um, you would if you weren't involved uh, in our program. I love that. You just told us a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> so I want to unpack uh, some of the things that you just touched on. So one thing that I, I want to point out is even though your personal experience is in football, you, it sounds like, work with athletes across the board. So it doesn't matter what sport, what age, what gender, you are across the board helping athletes develop. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I, and again, I, I would tell you, so we have a kid we have a kid now, um, I'm going to cross my fingers in front of the screen, but he is the, uh, he, if you know what the Hobie Baker award is, uh, it gets the Heisman trophy of hockey, you know? Oh, okay. Uh, so today or tomorrow, I think one of our kids, he's not a kid, but one of our, one of our young guys, you know, I imagine he's, he's a two time Hobie Baker uh, award nominee. I think he will be named a finalist, and, and I and I think I'm putting this in the universe that I think he's going to win. Uh, you know, I, I just they just lost. He just lost in the Frozen Four uh, regional, but uh, he he told me last night he just signed a, a, a deal with the Tampa Bay Lightning. So I'm I'm super 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 excited for him. But he's another kid guy. Excuse me, that's he's been in our program for 13 years. You know, and so. Uh, Again, we've been extremely fortunate. I don't like to use the word luck, but I'd say we've been extremely fortunate. And, you know, the, the piece that, and, and as we get more into a deeper dive that I, I really wanted to talk about is the mental part, you know, and then really understanding um, that whole process and, and what that's like and how we measure it. And so, so I, I think that it's pretty intriguing, pretty cool. I love it. Before we get to the mental piece, because obviously I'm very excited to talk about that. Um, what would you say are some of the off the field? And maybe maybe there's nothing, but I presume that there are lots of off the field wins that you have with these athletes because you are you are developing people, not just athletes, right? Everything yes. everything that you're doing is going to transfer over to every aspect of their lives. If we're talking right. about plan, if we're talking about just physical health, mental health. So two things. What would you say are some of the common denominators that you are hitting in your program? Maybe just kind of what the big buckets are that you are training, that you're working with these athletes. And then what are some of the, not just athletic wins, but the off the field or, you know, just right. life wins that these guys are, uh, these men and women are awesome. experiencing? Awesome. So the first thing I would say is lifestyle. And when you say lifestyle, you know, we have, see, we, we've been doing this so long that we, we have pre-Instagram, <laughs> pre-Snapchat, <laughs> pre-TikTok, and then we have all of this BS that these these youngsters are growing up in this world that they're, immer they're immersed in it. Mm -hmm. And so when I, when I talk about lifestyle, I think another word that, that people might like to associate with lifestyle would be culture. And so in our facility, um, and I'm in, I'm in my office, which is across the hall. I was, I was actually going to go in the facility and have the, the background be on the camera. But, um, you know, in, in our facility, we've created this culture for the athletes that's different than any other place that you will find. So without mentioning some of my peers, my really famous peers and friends across the world, one thing that's really unique about what we do is we don't do any kind of adult fitness. We don't do any moms. We don't do weight loss. We don't do boot camps. Um, you know, we specifically train only athletes. That's why at this time of the day, if I were to walk across the hall, the lights are out. It's completely dark. There's nobody there, you know. But come, you know, late afternoon and early evening, you know, I've got a first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't want to drop names, but, you know, we, we've got a pretty high level clientele. You know, we have guys that routinely fly from all around the world, get an Airbnb, 
and they may come and train, you know, three times a day for three weeks to get ready for something. So, but, but I think it's our culture uh, that we have that really, really separates. And, and I think with a lot of these, these guys, when they're introduced to not only me, but my team, not only do we, do we look the part, but we live it. You know, I, I think it would be really hard if I was walking around drinking a Diet Coke for anybody to take me seriously, you know, and that's not picking on people that like Diet Coke, but, you know, we have really, really, really high standards, you know, and we're not afraid to just tell people that it's not a really good fit. You know, uh, again, talking about culture, you know, our assessment process is six hours, you know, and someone might say, well, why would you spend or invest six hours for, for quote unquote free? Well, I don't like to use the word free. I like to use the word complimentary. But at the end of the day, what we, what we charge you to train will more than make up for the time that we invested to find out if it's a good fit or not. You know, and then that gives us an opportunity to see if we like you or if you like kind of our style of training and what we do. So before you invest any money, you know, before we invest any more time, you know, we understand, you know, let's, let's find out if it's a good fit for both of us. You know, because we know on the back end, from a business perspective, if we do our job, then you're going to be with us forever. So I'm not worried about the financial repercussions of that initial investment. You know, and I go back to, you know, and I use that. And before I answer the second part to your question, um, I say that to say we never, I could have never learned this in school. You know, uh, you know, unfortunately, it was a lot of trial and error to be able to get to this point. So to answer the second part of your question, um, not that it means anything, but so I have a master's in nutrition and you know, you ask, you know, what are some of the things that these guys and girls do off the field, off the court, off the ice um, that really sets them apart. And so we have a really unique uh, nutrition coaching like curriculum that we take athletes through where we monitor, and, and, and I'm going to get into this on the psychological component, but something that I created uh, where I measure um, compliance and adherence. You know, so we set up, you know, we set them up uh, grocery store visits. I mean, and I, and I say grocery store visit, I'm talking literally holding their hand, going up and down every aisle, you know, teaching them how they can change the molecular structure of bread by what they put on it or if they toast it and turn it into a resistant starch. Uh, and, and these guys, you know, the no fast food and, and having these guys really be accountable for, for what they eat and why they eat it and emotions and all of the different things that surround um, the behaviors as to why they make certain eating decisions, you know? So, um, you know, if you're feeling lonely or you had a bad game and, you know, how do you process that? How do you deal with certain anxiety? You know, so, you know, food, a lot of times food is, provides comfort for people, you know? So, and I would say all of our athletes, um, you know, I've, I've had girls that just true story, this one girl, I went to go refill her water bottle and I took the lid off and the smell almost, it, it, it just I almost blacked out. And I was like, oh my God, what is in there? And so her teammate told me that she drinks Dr. Pepper during soccer games. And so she had left the Dr. Pepper in her water bottle over the weekend without cleaning it out. And I went to go open it up. I'm like, oh, my God. So I say that to say this, this girl no longer drinks Dr. Pepper or, or, eats, at, or eats at Chick-fil-A. But, you know, there's, there's a huge dynamic at play. And you say, okay, what's the dynamic at play? Well, having met her mom and met her dad, and they're considerably, they had kids really late, so they're retired and they're really old. And I won't say that they're lazy, but they don't, they don't cook. So she's on her own as a teenager, you know, to provide for herself. And they're like, well, we send you to private school. We pay all this money for you to train and we pay all this money for you to play soccer. You're on your own. You're a big girl. So it's important on our side of the, the, the equation to understand the dynamics of what's going on in her world so we can help her make better decisions and then connect with the mom and dad so we can execute on the strategy that we have, you know, so we can win. But those are some of the things that I think the people that, that we're fortunate enough to work with, 
they really take that and run with it. And if I showed you my Google photos uh, from each file that, you know, and some of the athletes that go through that program, they photograph everything they eat. I mean, they take it to a whole nother level in terms of how the presentation of the food and, and how it looks um, in addition to, you know, the things that they eat and, and the things that they monitor. I love that. So what you are really touching on is the idea that we can't just, we can't just give our own one particular element of a person's life. We have to understand and facilitate them making progress in all aspects, right? Because if we, if we don't, we're going to be unbalanced. And that sounds like what your program is about is seeing all yeah. the areas of life. Everything. So we've talked yeah. about, we've been, we've talked about obviously exercise is a given with athletes. Um, right. Now let's jump into the psychological side. So um, obviously you're a versus partner, but before you became a versus partner, you were clearly seeking a solution for brain sensing technology. You wanted to be able to capture, and I'm sure you're doing a ton of measurements on the physiology of the, the athletes. So I'm sure that you wanted some objective measures of the brain and, and what they're right. doing. So what right. was it? Really was the catalyst for you to start. So this is so this is cool. This is cool. So I was a psych undergrad, and and, and I kind of I really more, most the, the area because I, I thought I thought I well I really want obviously I want to be a pro athlete, but I was like well if, if pro sports doesn't work, uh, I'm going to do criminology, but I couldn't do criminology because my my school didn't have it. So I was like, oh, what's this psych stuff? And so I, I had this awesome professor and I got into uh, social deviance, you know, so I was understanding labeling theory and, you know, getting in it, but without going off on that tangent. So that's what kind of, that, that kind of lit a spark for me. So uh, as my, my failure in, in pro sports happened, um, I was digging around and we're talking about, this is early two thousands. So I was digging around on the internet and because of my, my psych, uh, undergrad, I was able to get access to some different um, surveys uh, to do mental assessments. And so I stumbled upon, I don't know if you've heard of AMI, but AMI was, was, was called Athletes Motivational Inventory. So that was one of the, the a psychometric assessment that I found. And then another one I discovered was Dr. Robert Trotwine's TAP report. And so I actually have a copy of the first one I ever done in 2000 for 2000 maybe 2001, and I had actually done it with Matt Burke. So he was kind of my, well, he's retired now, so he won't be pissed, but he was kind of my guinea pig, you know, for doing all this stuff. So the, you're gonna this, you're gonna love this. So I had been doing the tech report for seven eight, seven, eight years, and I get a call, like, from Dr. Robert Trotwine, and he's like, I know you don't know me, but you've been subscribing to my report for like 10 years and I noticed on the back end that you've been testing kids at like nine and 10 years old. Like, why are you doing that? And I said, well, if you're tested a pro, it's almost too late, right? I wanna find out what's wrong, what's deficient, what can we improve? And then I wanna figure out how to do it. So that's, that's what I was doing. And he's like, well, you know, that's not the way that the, the test is, is really set up. It's like, I know it's not, but I figured out a way to improve behavior anyway. He's like, so he's from Kansas City. So he's like, listen, we, we got to get together. So I fly down, we meet, uh, I get introduced to Sterling Bates. Do you know who Sterling Bates is? I don't. So Sterling Bates is Myers Briggs. Oh, okay. And so Sterling Bates, Dr. Robert Trawana hired Sterling Bates to work on something called the mental gym. But, and, and again, I won't take 100% credit, but I had already built the mental gym on the back end. And actually, if you go to, it's now Riser Mindset, um, and he has now brought Rob Pike on to the team, but I helped them develop this mental gym that they have now, you know, that we use. and. It's habit-based, and, and you say, what's the point? Well, one of the things that we know, um, developmentally, at least I do, from my personal experience of trying to come up with ways to fill in these gaps for people, 
Um, and and if, the, if our audience doesn't know, Dr. Robert Trotwine developed predictive Z-scores and the government, and hopefully I don't get in trouble for this, but the government actually stole his technology because when he was a young college student, professional, he built these predictive Z-scores. It is, this is actually what the military to this day and Navy SEALs top down what they use to determine, it's called the mental toughness and combat score. And so Dr. Robert Trotwine actually brought me into the National Football League. And so for the past, since 2010, since 2010, up until COVID, um, you know, I worked with Dr. Robert Trotwine and Robert Pike uh, for the National Football League and doing assessments, you know, at the NFL Combine. And then we would take this data you know, and then coaches would get the report. And so if, if no one's ever seen one, it, it gives you, there's a couple of different scores that it gives you, but but a team, so we would sit in this room in Indianapolis, a team would get the report and they'd be like, look, is this guy gonna rape 10 people? Is he gonna, is he gonna use drugs? You know, what, you know, what, cause they're like, I don't understand what all this stuff means. Yeah. And so that's, that's what one of my roles, you know, was or is to help teams, GMs, position coaches interpret this data. But that's actually how it started back in the early 2000s on complete organic accident. You know, me wanting to understand, you know, how the mind worked and then how to make improvements. You know, so interestingly enough, um, I'm in the 1%, you know, my mental, my predictive Z score, uh, I'm, in, I'm 90, 90 some odd percent, you know. So I know um, just from, not only just testing myself and, and going through the assessment myself, but understanding strengths and weaknesses that people have and then how you can, you know, kind of fill in those gaps. So that was, you know, I knew, and when I think about everything that happens physically, I think we've maxed that out, you know, in terms of what we can do physically. So I, I think the only other place to really take performance to the next level is in between your ears. So on top of that, I wanted to add, and all of this stuff is completely by accident, so um, I had a chance to, so I used to live in New Zealand. Um, I started a soccer club over there in, in uh, Porua, which is kind of a suburb of Wellington. And um, I ended up meeting um, the people that do VX Sport. And uh, I don't know if you know, uh, Brett Weiniger is. So Brett Weiniger is one of the founders of Halo. You heard of Halo, Halo Neuroscience, you know? And they were just recently they were just recently bought out by um, the Flow Genome Project, which, which I'm also a part of. So uh, I had a chance in 2009. Um, I read the book The Rise of Superman, which is written by uh, Jamie Wheel and Stephen Kotler. Um, long story short, I ended up taking a couple courses. Uh, I ended up befriending uh, both of them. I ended up being mentored. I'm still mentored by those guys to this day, and I, and. That was all, again, a super organic accident, but I had stumbled upon in the late 2000s, me high, chick sent me high. If any of our, our listeners, you know, Professor Emeritus at Loyola in Chicago, who actually quantified what flow states are. And so as I started to understand what flow states are and how important um, that we, we knew it was really important for performance, but we just didn't know how and we just didn't know why. So as we begun to understand how the mind worked and understand how we could, how being in a flow state was the result of certain circumstances that once we could harness the power to do it, um, you know, that that's where it came from. Now, I got to add this. So this is because this is so, this is so weird, right? So also in 2009, um, I met some coaches from Harvard in New Zealand and I had an opportunity to um, create um, a business plan for the Harvard Innovation Project. And I don't know if you've ever heard of it. So, uh, but anyway, we were, we made it to the final stages. And so it was there that I had met Dr. Marcus Elliott. And I don't know if you know who Dr. Marcus Elliott is, but a P3. Yeah. So not only did I meet Dr. Marcus Elliott, I met Dr. Seward Rutkov, whom, I'm still working with to this day. So, um, and when I met Marcus Elliott, you know, he had told me about um, the Versus technology, you know, so I had a chance then to, I was in San Francisco at, uh, I forget what year it was, but 
it was a uh, wearable technology symposium in San mm -hmm. Fran. And I believe it's Dr. Leslie Sherlin. Yeah. Yes. So he was talking about how to like physically change, like you can physically change the brain and there's technology that exists um, for, for them to be able to do this. And so this was all, like I said, super organic process, but it was there, there was this like three to four year window where like I was in position with these people not knowing what was gonna happen and where it was gonna go um, and ended up learning more about the brain than I ever thought I would. And then I made some, some really good connections. And, and I remember, because I think when Versus had first came out, it was, it was made for the iPad, but then Apple's technology kept changing so fast that I think it went dark for a while bef before, before it came back and they could re reformat it. But, um, but yeah, I was completely blown away uh, by Dr. Uh, Sherlin's presentation and how you could physically change the brain. And so I was like, I need this, like I gotta get on this because it was really the only thing. So if, if the audience isn't familiar with transcranial direct current stimulation, uh, if they've ever heard of DARPA, you know, which is it's the defense department, it's the business side, but they completely bought the technology. Um, a great book by um, Stephen Kotler and Jamie Wheels called Stealing Fire. They get into the brain training and what transcranial direct current stimulation has done for the military. And now we know, you know, and I, I tell people, and again, you'll ask, and, and so I probably, you'll probably have a follow up to this, but so how do we use versus? And so uh, it really comes down to if we want to change the brain, I want to say, and don't quote me on this, but I think you need 450 hours a year. And I think that you break down that math, it's probably 20 minutes every other day or an hour, some a week of actually physically changing your brain and uh, or doing doing the work. And so um, that's, that's what our athletes do. Uh, you know, the ones, and we offer it, you know, it's part of, and I gave the business side in a second, but it's part of the membership, depending on if they get an elite membership, it's part of their membership. So they don't really see the cost to it. You know, they just have to make the time to get it in. And again, I'll circle back. And I always use the word compliance adherence because in my opinion, we're always trying to modify behaviors, behavior change, you know, and so we need them to make commitments in order to get a certain level of compliance and that compliance leads to the outcomes that we're seeking because they have to do the work. Yeah. Absolutely. So apologize for being long-winded, but no, I wanted it's to great. get out of that thought yeah. before I forgot something. No, it's really great context. And I was not aware of how long you were, um, you were aware of Versus. So that's really exciting because I was at that same symposium I was in a different role with the company at the time, but Dr. Sherlin is our co-founder, for those of you guys yep. who don't know about Versus. I know you know that, Ted, but um, just for our listeners, want to kind of call that out. And that symposium, man, that was so much fun that we had putting it on. Um, Carrie Walsh was there. Dr. Michael Gervais was there. Tons of fun people. Um, Stephen Kotler, I don't think he spoke at that particular one, um, but he is definitely... No been involved um, with our company and Flow Genomes or Jamie and, and that whole crew. So it's really fun to see all the synergy and how you were putting the pieces together about how we can incorporate um, versus specifically, but just the idea of, of objectively measuring that six inches between our ears, right? That's yeah. where that next frontier <clears throat> is in performance. Um, and I do want to clarify one thing very quickly, um, and it's one of the differentiating factors for Versus, is we are a passive sensor. So Versus, just for all of our listeners, listeners is not putting any current in, like not uh, stimulation. <laughs> it's just measuring. Yeah. And then right. we're getting feedback, audio visual feedback in the app. And again, I know you know this, Ted, but just for our listeners who will hear that, it's a distinction distinction that's worth mentioning um, because not everybody knows the differences. But what your right. next thing mentioned about um, being compliant and doing the work and adhering to the protocol and the time that is required to put in because versus is passive, the person is learning how to feel what it's like to have that more optimal brain state. And they're doing that with that feedback from the app. And so it does require a decent amount of time 
But the nice thing is, is that what fires together wires together, right? And so when you practice that more optimal brain state enough, then that is when we get to see sustainable changes in that uh, brain performance. So I just wanted to clarify a little bit of that for our listeners, but it's awesome to hear the context. Um, I'm, I was waiting for you to say something about Red Bull or something like that being in New Zealand because we had a couple of contacts well, there too. Yeah. So, and I, so I, I was, I was going to mention that and, you know, without, uh, you know, I really would encourage, you know, all of your followers and all of your listeners to, um, if they, if they don't want to implement it into their business now, just use it personally, you know, uh, you know, I think it's, it's cool when I pull up my own neuro assessment and I'm able to show it, you know, to the athletes and show them my score and, you know, how I, I think I'm, I was like 140 for 140. Like I was like, I had like some, I won't call it perfect score, but, um, <clears throat> but I think it's important to have your own experience with it so you can articulate it, uh, you know, to the athlete or to the parent, you know, whomever you're, whomever you're working with, uh, you know, if you want to try to get the, the quote unquote buy-in, you know, I've, you know, one thing, and I would ask and answer it for people that are in the training business. If you're, you know, one of the things that I think technology is awesome and, but technology is also expensive. And so you, you have to have a culture and you, you, you have to, I don't want to say trial and error because yeah, I think that can also take a, a lot of time that you can never get back. And, and I always say like, if you can learn from somebody else without making a mistake yourself, do it. You know, so I know you're, you're going to share my contact information, but what I would tell everybody is, you know, you, you have to look at, if you're figuring out just on the business side, um, you know, how do you add value? So for us, if you were to look at what we offer and what anybody else offers, nobody else offers it. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else, you know, in, in our area and in a lot of places um, that I know, um, the people, they're not in, in invested in technology as we are. And you say, well, you know, why would you do that? Because it changes the experience, you know? And so it's like, what is your goal? You know, are you for the money grab, you know? And so, People say, well, you know, well, how much do you make? And, and, and I, without getting into my own personal compensation, being transparent, we we advertise our prices are advertised on our site. You know, we don't have any, you know, nothing's nothing's hidden. You know, I, I have some guys that pay 50, 60 grand a year, you know, to train. So when you're paying that amount of money to train, you know, we, we have to be able to give you something that you can't get somewhere else. We have to be able to, to give you this experience that you can't get somewhere else, you know? So, you know, high school kids might pay anywhere from, you know, six to eight grand a year to train. And and that's expensive. I mean, no matter if you're in South Dakota, or if you're in LA, well, LA is a little different story, but, <laughs> but yeah. so I say that to say you, to, to me, the technology, and then if you're able to use it and they're able to use it and they understand it and it makes sense, it just it just changes the experience for them and 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 for us you know anybody that's coming in our door their goal you know we, and we don't do goals you know i don't know you know i was i say that's survivorship bias i don't know if you know what survivorship bias means but and I, i'll explain in a second but 99 percent of people walking that door want to be pros for sure want to be d1 and you know they, they want being, being a pro athlete is, is, is what they want to try and achieve ultimately, you know, and you say, okay, well, why not goals? Well, most people suffer from survivorship bias and you say, what's your point? Well, if my goal is to be a pro athlete and I don't make it, does that make everything I did to get to that point, a complete failure and a waste of time? Absolutely not. You know, you're going to learn a lot about yourself. You're going to make sacrifices the same commitment level that I have to what I do professionally is the same commitment level that I had as an athlete. It hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is just the career pursuit has moved from one area to another, you know? So the same things that I wanted to achieve, you know, being the next quote unquote Adrian Peterson, you know, these are the things that I'm achieving and I want to achieve in, in, in my professional you know, life off the field. And so that's, you know, that's survivorship bias is, is to not achieve the goal that you set 
and then thinking that everything else that you've done up to that point was a failure because you didn't get it. Yeah. And that's simply, that's simply not true. You know, um, there are small, small, small victories uh, throughout, throughout that process. Absolutely. And, you know, many people, it's very cliche now, but it's really true. You know, it's about the journey, not the destination, right? And everything that you learn in that journey. So yeah. um, one thing that you, again, a couple of things I want to unpack from what you said, um, talking to our professionals who will hear this, um, what you touched on, you didn't use these words, but this is the how I describe it to our, our potential partners is versus absolutely can be a market differentiator. It allows you to provide cutting edge technology to your clients in a way that's really easy to implement and it makes you stand out relative to every other professional who's in your area. And that's just another way of saying what you just said, Ted, is that you guys are one of the few that is offering so many services in a packaged way that you're doing and versus is just part of that that elevates your services to the next level. Um, and then the next, <laughs> sorry, what was that? No, I said correct. Yeah. And then the, the next thing, and you started to go into it, but I'd love for our listeners to get a little bit more detail and it's on the slide here, but you started to talk about how you explain. And it sounds like one of the ways that you explain versus is by simply showing your data and talking about your own personal experience with it. But, you know, when you're talking to an athlete and you're talking about the value of working on the brain and working on those electrical patterns of the brain, what are the, what's some of the language that you use or some of the ways that you help break it down so that they understand why they're doing what they're doing and why doing it as often as we recommend is important? Well, I, I try to really start, it, it all depends on, because each person has a completely different understanding of how their brain works. And then what habits, and then what what habits are, and, and then how does the how do the thing excuse me, how do these things or how will these doing these tasks help me optimize my performance? And so one thing, so obviously the dashboard's pretty cool, um, but the other thing is you know starting with understanding the amygdala and the hippocampus. I like to talk about the brain, you know, so it's not really sciency. I want to sciency. I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, bludgeon you to death with technical language that just completely turns you off yeah. you know to what we're trying to get you to understand but uh you know i think i'm like i'm a pretty good storyteller and so um you know and, and long story short you know i used to work for nike um you know way back like this is mid-2000s when they had their vision program so uh, we use synaptic goggles and some of the stuff that we do and so I, I try to let people like test and or try the technology so they can experience it themselves. Mm -hmm. So even if I have to like hop on under my profile and just have them, you know, swing the golf club and they're just like, Oh my God. Like, oh. <laughs> so they see like, it's not nearly as easy as they want it to be. And you know, it's, it's so crazy telling you this story. We had, I won't say his name because I, I don't want I don't want people to think he's just name dramatic all these famous people all the time, but I had this guy that uh, that he played he played and he was in the NFL for a number of years, but he was on that versus every day. He was just he couldn't put it down. It was like he was so obsessed with getting just getting the car around. I mean, it was it was just crazy. You know, every day, you know, he he'd sit, he physically would sit in my office. You know, um, and he would just he would just want to do it every day. And, and I find I think if you can have technology and you can if you can have something that can almost uh, I want to say do the work for you. But again, you're providing this experience. And when someone's on versus it doesn't it's not taking up any of your time. You know, if they're in another location or if they're moved into a quiet area in their in your facility, you know, on the business side, they, they're, they're getting all the benefits, you know, and it's, it's not really costing you uh, any, any time. It's not time intensive, you know, so, you know, you can actually um, service people or more people um, and then have them use it, get this amazing experience. And then it, it doesn't cost you any time to help them execute, you know, uh, 
unless they have dreadlocks or really long hair. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes we have some, some challenges with the sensors, but yeah. but other than that, um, you know, again, I just go back to the experience. I think one thing that, you know, I, I've, I've given presentation at Leaders of Performance in 2010. Uh, I did Leaders in uh, Performance at the National Basketball Players Association, uh, where I was in a room full of neuroscientists with Dr. Daniel Chow. And, you know, the technology, I would say, speaks for itself. What I try to help people understand is getting back into the experience and then monitoring you know, and, and again, that gets back to compliance adherence ratios, but if you're using it, what is the outcome? You know, you have these outcomes that you're, that you're looking for that you seek, you know, and then when I interact with the athletes, you know, I'm trying to understand how their game is impacted or how it has been changed by these experiences, you know, so we can uh, help quantify the process, you know, not only for them, but for ourselves. I love that. Yeah, and that's a great segue. You, again, started to touch on it a little bit, but how do you implement it? Because it sounds like you have some people using it in the gym, and then some people are using it remotely. And that's one of the benefits of Versus is we built it to be a very easy out-of-the-box experience, meaning that you know people aren't having to learn neuroscience to use it. They put the headset on, they hit the continue button, it does everything for you. So how are you building it into your business, and how has that impacted your business? It's, I mean, if you look, so if you were to look on our website, we have a, we have a little curriculum comparison chart. You would see that like our pros and or our elite clients uh, get a versus membership. And so um, they, they use it at their leisure, but they know that it needs to be around an hour a week. Okay. And so um, if anyone's ever been through the assessment, you know, if you're stress or anxiety focused, uh, it, it's a pretty cool curriculum, you know, and I know it's hard to, I know people are like, oh, what do you mean? But it's cool because of the experience that you get with it. And then you can quantify it at the end. It's quantified and it tells you, you know, you need this, you know, you should do this and you should do this the next time. Uh, and the setup's really easy. And so, you know, we train in two hour blocks. And so most of the athletes know, uh, in particular on strength days for us, which aren't as difficult as what we would call a performance day. And so typically on a strength day, uh, they would they, they can squeeze in 20 minutes on the front end um, to, to, do, to do a session, to do a 20 minute session. Great. To do it. So, so again, it's all, it's, they're all moving targets because it's based on their attendance, but, you know, our headsets are fully charged and, you know, they're, <clears throat> they're sitting here for them to use them. And then they come in, they have a, so I don't know if you've ever seen a Normatech, uh, like the, the Normatech chair, we, we've got like a little recovery area, but we have this giant chair that they can sit in and lean back and just focus and just do, do their verses right there. Uh, like right when they walk, right when they walk in the door. What's that? Is it like a zero gravity chair? Yeah, it's essentially yeah. It's a big, huge chair, and but but they can and then we've got four of them right inside the door. So they come in, they sit down, and they get their they get their versus in, and then they get started. Uh, but at least you know, depending on how many days they're here or whether or not they're traveling, but uh, you know, at least two two to three days a week. Nice. And are you ever sending it with athletes for their travel or not yet? No. <laughs> no. And I'm not letting those out of my. I'm not letting them out of my sight. <laughs> so they're not. They're, they're not cheap. They're not easy to replace. <laughs> I get that. I get that. Awesome. Well, you have touched on a lot of really awesome things today, Ted. Um, I appreciate you taking time to talk us through how you're using versus. What do you think the benefits are? How it's impacting your high-end athletes that you're working with, um, and just yeah. overall to get to know you as a versus partner a bit more um and yeah. everybody who's listening um i'm gonna put this slide up now with uh ted's contact information but also we do um have him listed as a partner on our versus partner page and um you can definitely check more information out um if you are working with athletes and you want to contact him or however um but yeah. we're 
to have you as a partner. It's, uh, yeah, whatever um, I can. I mean, whatever I can do to help. I mean, I've had more people than I can count bend over backwards for me. So, you know, I always say if there's anything I can do for anyone, I always offer that up. I just love to pay it forward. So, um, you know, again, I would just echo, don't hesitate, give me a ring or shoot me an email. And if I can answer any questions for anybody, uh, I'd love to do that. And I'd love to help. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Ted. Um, we're just under an hour, so I think it's a great point to wrap it up. I feel like we could talk all day, but <laughs> yeah. respect for everybody that will be watching this webinar. Um, we'll cut it for now, but hopefully we'll get you on again sometime um, when we have an update, maybe some other data, something like that would be fun to do a follow-up session. Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm all for it. I can't wait. All right. Very good. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Ted. And thank you, everybody who watched this. And yep. we'll sign out now. Thanks so much. Yeah, have a good day. Get some sunshine. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.